Hello everybody, my name is Peter Jäger, I'm a rheumatologist at the Kistler Group and today we want to welcome you for another video session uh, about calibration intervals, adjustment and determination. You possibly all know the situation, you have plenty of test and measurement equipment of all kinds of brands, all kinds of manufacturers, all ages and the always repeating question is how often has the equipment to be calibrated, what is the interval, what is the manufacturer's recommendation, what is an applicable interval, what is good for everyday's use. And we want to help you a little bit about this subject. First thing we always do is take a look at norms. Um, I guess for most of you guys, um, the ISO 9000 2015 is the mother of all norms. And this norm request in section 7.1.5.2 um, when a measurement traceability is a requirement or is considered by the organization, which is your company, to be an essential part of providing confidence in the validity of measurement results, which means nothing more than good quality of your product, measuring equipment shall be calibrated or verified or both at specified intervals or prior to use against measurement standards traceable to international standards. So we know exactly Calibration is mandatory, intervals have to be given, but it doesn't really help for every day's use what you really have to do. Uh, what we can do is dig further into applicable norms and specifications. And we found um, ILAC G5, a norm which has been pretty good and gives you helpful hints for everyday work, but it's unfortunately withdrawn. We have the DIN ISO 1012, Measurement management system requirements for measurement process and measuring equipment hmm, doesn't really help. It's very global. But we found something else in actual that is the ILAC G24 OIML D 10, which is called Guidelines for the Determination of Calibration Intervals of Measuring Instrument. And this norm gives you two major uh, categories of calibration intervals. The first one is the initial choice of calibration intervals, initial choice when you have a brand new test and measurement equipment. And the others gives you methods of reviewing calibration intervals after the initial interval has been gone. Let's start with the initial interval. Possibly you know the situation, you receive a brand new piece of equipment like our Kistler Inspect. You open the box, uh, yeah, brand new piece of equipment. And the questions repeat again, is this piece of equipment calibrated? And if not, what is the interval? Uh, you take a look at the manual, look through. Most of the times you will find some hint about the calibration interval. And that's our recommendation. Follow this recommendation, which is for Kistler instruments, 24 months for the most systems in a normal condition, a normal working condition. 12 months if you have an exposed environment um, and three to six months for safety related facilities or exposed areas. At this time we need to point out calibration interval is your job. You run a quality management system and you are responsible to determine, redetermine and recalculate intervals. That means you have to do a risk analysis uh, to determine those intervals. But the first step, again, follow the manufacturer's recommendations. And now let's switch to the next calibration intervals. Typical intervals are 6 months, 12 months, 24 months. Most of test and measurement equipment should be calibrated within these intervals. The next phase was, would be some sort of interval adjustment after the initial interval has been run. Um, controlling very often causes you to extend intervals. That saves a lot of costs, but that's the wrong decision. Calibration interval um, increasing for cost reasons doesn't make any sense. Calibration interval extension should be made on technical decision and not on, on uh, cost reasons. Um, there are a very, very few test and measurement equipment on this world which really uh, work with a long interval. The best thing you can do is take out the calibration certificates of the first, the second, and if available, the third calibration. And now just check what happened to this piece of equipment. 
if you have a conformity decision in this calibration certificate, you just check did it pass the calibration or fail the calibration. If you have a very stable instrument which always passes the calibration without any adjustment, well, extend the interval. I wouldn't say just double the interval, but it's okay to go from 6 to 12 months or from 12 to 24 months, but uh, we cannot recommend any other calibration interval longer than 24 months. People found that it's possible because, as I mentioned before, you are responsible for your calibration interval. So you could choose an interval of five, six, seven years. This absolutely makes no sense. Intervals that long have no technical relationship. They are just made for cost saving. People writing norms found out that uh, some customers choose those extreme long intervals of six, eight years. As mentioned before, that doesn't make sense. So what they did is they limited the validity of the calibration certificates, not the calibration intervals. They limited the validity of calibration certificates. Up to 26 months is a very, very common interval. Um, that means 24 months, two months for shipping and handling. That's behind that. Again, you are, as an instrument holder, responsible for the calibration intervals, but these guys writing norms um, limit the certificates. For example, there's a DIN 51309 in section 6.3.2 recalibration. They say the calibration certificate is valid for a maximum of 26 months. That forces you, the customer, to a good interval of about 24 months, that's the idea behind it. Some additional information about calibration intervals. The calibration interval starts at the day of the calibration, not the day of the first use. Even there are very few norms like ISO 6789, which says calibration interval starts at the day of the, of the first use. That doesn't make sense, especially for torque wrenches, for example. You make a calibration, store them, you don't know what happens inside the torque wrenches. Grease becomes sticky uh, or other mechanical parts can, can stuck. So calibration starts at that day when the calibration has been performed. About 8% of all test and measurement equipment are found to be out of tolerance or defective. We are talking about pieces of equipment which are just turned in for calibration, not for repair. So the customer doesn't know it's out of tolerance. So you can see that calibration makes sense at all because 8%, almost 10% of your equipment is out of tolerance or not okay. So please record that when picking and choosing calibration intervals. We are coming to the end of our today's short video. Um, this video has been an extract of a full day seminar which we offer. Please check our homepage, their service and trainings, and you find a couple of seminars. This seminar in particular is Test and Measurement Equipment Management and Calibration, which provides plenty of information about uh, calibration, a lot of background information, and a lot of helpful hints about calibration and test and measurement uh, equipment management systems. We hope to see you in another video or in one of our seminars. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. Goodbye.